Hello guys and welcome back to another KSP2 video and today we are back in the KSP2 exploration let's play walkthrough series and today we are doing some more uh, missions so the first mission we're going to do is of course moon signal we will be launching a rocket to a spot on the moon so there's a weird spot right here so if we look on the moon see this yellow dot over there we are going to have to send a uh, ship, a lander, and land over there and bring back the data. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I, I really have no idea what this dot really means. It's, I don't know, it's something very ominous, very mysterious, I must add. It's, it's uh, no one knows what it really is. So let's just head to the VAB and start making a rocket that will send us there so yeah first of all I start off with the tiny tin can thing where you put the kerbals in add the heat shield parachute decoupler and then I add a science junior for the science and that's it I add some fuel <laughs> of course we need fuel and some solar panels we need electricity to uh, we need fuel and electricity I also decided to offset so the batteries in a little bit it's not really cheating I'm just I just think it's ugly that if I don't just offset it a teeny wee bit and then now I'm adding some more a larger fuel tank this is the second stage and then the main stage is three big tanks and a swivel engine and on the side we're gonna add first of all two um, reliant engine boosters and then after that we're gonna add um, two more in an asparagus so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the asparagus uh, configuration so basically these two right, that I've already added they have a few lines leading into the central core and then after that I'm gonna add two more on the other side and the, these other two that I'm gonna add will be of uh, will be um will be um what's the word again uh, will be feeding into will be feeding into the two original uh, boosters right there so this is what we call an asparagus. See, there we go. I'm adding some more right there, and I'm putting the fuel lines. See how the fuel lines are connecting with the original boosters? Yeah. So when we decouple, these two that I've just added will decouple first, and then after that, once, and then later on, uh, the other two will decouple, and leaving the main stage always full of fuel. So. This is the most efficient uh, fueling configuration, though it's quite complex. But yeah, now it's time to launch our rocket. So yeah, countdown time. So three, two, one, and we have um, we have lift off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit uh, not quite segued very well, but there we go. We now have lift off. And I'm putting the um, throttle a little down because we've got pretty good TWR with this rocket. Of course, we've got four four um, reliant engines and one swivel engine in the middle to have control. And we also have some uh, guidance fins. So yeah, just doing the basic regular gravity turn, aiming for 45 degrees by 10 kilometers. But yeah. So yeah, now that we're doing the ascent, as I've said a million times, by this point you should be able to do uh, an ascent without needing me to walk through it in detail. Like, you can just watch this footage and you can do it along without me having to precisely say all the little details. So I'm not going to dilly-dally too long about the orbital procedures because this mission is actually really challenging. Like actually for me even for me it was quite challenging because like landing at a precise location is very difficult it's like it doesn't seem difficult but actually it is quite difficult you need to be pr quite precise with your engine burns and after that you need to do a lot of eyeballing which for me i've always had a lot of difficulties with because I, I have difficulties like understanding the controls because once you've got weird orientation so i need the controls kind of inverse and do a lot of weird stuff so yeah, very challenging mission, so yeah, you should be, if you're doing this mission along, you should be able to get into Kerbin orbit by yourself, at least, or, or at least 
just watching the footage you can do it like you don't have to listen to me about all the details but yeah we've now decoupled all four um side boosters they're all gone now now we've only got the central swivel uh, main stage so yeah just coasting towards orbit coasting i'm gonna aim for an apoapsis of just about uh, I don't know. I don't remember. This footage was kind of old. Also, I also need to mention one thing. This video is coming out on a Sunday, which I usually try to have my KSP2 videos on a Saturday. But I made a mistake the other day. So, I was editing my videos, just as usual. I tend to edit my videos a couple days in advance. And so I edited the wrong video. So I edited the wrong footage. I edited a video that was going to come out next week, so I wasted a bunch of time, so I only started editing this video yesterday, and I just finished it this morning, on Sunday, so it's like, I hope it comes out on a Sunday, but yeah, I made a really big blunder, I just, I edited the wrong video, and I was like, oh my god, I just wasted a bunch of time, because I could have done it later, but anyways, it doesn't matter anymore, because... You guys get to see this video anyways, okay? So, now I'm just plotting a uh, trajectory towards the Mun with our maneuver nodes. Once again, I've done this like three times already in this series, so you guys kind of know how to do it. And also, I must also add something. This is actually a part two to um, the previous video of this, the previous installment of this series. Because um, the last video was going into deep space and that was actually the secondary mission. So, of course, in this week's video we're doing the primary mission which is going to the man, of course. Uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, yo, yeah, I must mention the fact... Oh my god, I said a weird noise. I must mention the fact why this video is coming out so late. Once again, I was in France last uh, month. During the entire month of April I was in France. So I couldn't edit my videos, and the, the annoying thing is all of the footage, all of this footage, I had recorded it before I went to France, but I didn't have time to edit it. So I was like, oh no, I've got the footage, but I can't edit it, so I couldn't release any videos, so that was kind of annoying. But at least I had like three Minecraft videos and two Planet Coaster videos, so yeah. Did you guys go watch the, go watch the new series right there? The new Planet Coaster series right there. Up is down. I'm gonna put a bookmark thing. A I don't know what it's called, but you know, like the thing that comes up on your screen. Yeah, I'm gonna put it up right there. So yeah, now it's time for our um, orbital insertion burn. And one thing is, I am actually only putting us in a elliptical orbit. Because the next thing we're gonna do is actually an inclination change. Because this like spot is on a very inclined orbit. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna put ourselves in an inclined orbit because uh, inclination changes are actually much cheaper and more efficient to do when your apoapsis is higher. So yeah, the higher your apoapsis the more efficient your uh, inclination change. Or basically when, I mean apoapsis, I mean the higher your inclination change is done at on relative to the orbit, the more efficient and more cheap it will be. So yeah, I'm putting a maneuver node at apoapsis and then pulling on the normal burn so that I can then kind of change my orbit so that it's kind of similar to the tilt of the um, see the little dot right there yeah have a similar tilt and there we go we've got pretty good it's not perfect but of course as i said we can't get a perfect incline so we're we're gonna change this later on once uh we're gonna do our um, landing burn when i mean landing burn i mean like the landing part thing yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna change this later is what i'm trying to say okay uh, there we go, so now I'm just putting a maneuver node so that we get a nice circular orbit and that's kind of it, you know, you guys know the drill, how to do these kind of things. I'm gonna take a sip of my drink, it's, I'm having, I'm not having water today, I'm having lemongrass juice. It actually tastes really good, let me just take a sip.
There we go, that's it. So now it's time to do our landing burn. So I'm plotting a maneuver node. So I kind of did a couple orbits of the Mun until our orbital line was kind of above or like as close as possible to the dot. And now I'm pulling, I'm making a maneuver node and pulling on the retrograde. And uh, I'm making a quick save, of course. I did cut out all of the quick saves, but just remember do a bunch of quick saves. One thing that I was going to say you should do now, I didn't do it because we are already in quite a good tilt. But one thing you should do is also do a little bit of normal anti-normal. To just change your inclination, just a teeny bit. But I didn't do it because we were quite good already, so yeah. As I said, you might there was a cut right there, that's because I just did a bunch of orbits around the moon until my, li my orbital line was... Uh, as c just above or as close to the dot as possible so yeah that's what you want to do when you need to land in a precise location is just do a bunch of orbits until your orbital line is just above or as close to the point as possible so there we go and now I'm putting a little bit more retrograde so that we can get a slightly closer landing because this is actually my second attempt because the first attempt I kind of messed up so yeah, now I'm going to start doing a little bit of normal, anti-normal, so trying to change my orbit once again. We want to try to aim for that our orbital line is just above the uh, dot, as close to the dot as possible. And so here I'm kind of moving between um, ship view and map view, because yeah, we need to be really uh, precise with this. So yeah, that's what I said, this mission is quite tricky, because... Landing in a precise location can be really, really difficult. And now I'm just going to use up my last stage until it runs out of fuel. I think I deployed it a little bit prematurely, but I think it's okay, because I wanted the landing legs. So now I'm going to move on to doing a little bit of uh, eyeballing. So I'm still, I'm still stuck to retrograde. But I'm going to start doing a little bit of eyeballing. Now, this is where it actually gets quite tricky because, yeah, it's very hard to, like, uh, grasp your controls and have perfect control of the ship while trying to maneuver. What I'm trying to say is we, it's quite tricky to maneuver yourself in an eyeballing manner like this. It's really tricky. So, yeah, I'm just kind of moving around, trying to land and as you can see this dot was actually an easter egg well i don't really know what that easter egg is but it kind of looks like an arch well anyways we're just going to continue our, our landing so yeah we're just holding on pro grade just kind of trying to get close to it uh, to complete this mission you actually need to get quite close to the arch so just make sure you're nice and close so basically, I just under or like as close as you can, even on top of the arch would work. But yeah, I'm just kind of trying to maneuver myself closer to the arch. So yeah, you're definitely gonna need more fuel than what f than for a normal landing because you're doing a lot of adjustments. So yeah, that's why I kind of overbuilt this rocket because I knew I'm gonna need quite a lot of fuel. So yeah. So yes, weird arch, um, arch on the moon. So it almost feels like I've seen this before, but I don't really know what that is. So we're just kind of maneuvering towards the thing. Ooh, I'm doing some very um dangerous maneuvers. Don't use this as a tutorial, but yeah, I had to pause the commentary because I had to go do something again. <laughs> I always have so much stuff to do during the commentaries, but yeah. I'm getting close, close to the place. We're not quite under, so in the end, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more maneuvering. Ma maneuvering, but yeah, I'm trying to get myself nice and close. Doing a little bit more, just like hopping, hovering, and getting close to the arch thing. I I don't know what it is, but it looks quite ominous, as I've said. It's I don't know. It almost looks like a map. Of the Kabola system. Oh well, that's that's interesting, but yeah, I don't know what it is, but very ominous. And now we're coming down for landing near some of the rocks, and we now have touchdown. So yeah, now we can actually do some research. 
just we're close enough that we have the monarch the munch biome but yeah so i decided i wanted to get closer so i did a little bit more jumping and hopping and trickery and stuff like that didn't go very well as you will see i kind of crashed and actually all of these rocks are solid which i didn't realize i thought they were not solid so um, I fell down so I toppled over so I kind of wanted to fix myself but then I crashed into a rock and yep yeah. but yep yeah, now I'm back so yep let me just get nice and close up close to the thing and there we go it's it's a man arch I guess it's a man arch and also you might be wondering why suddenly we're not in the shadow anymore it's because I just time warped until there was no more shadow but yeah we're on the man arch so that's interesting I've actually funnily enough I've been to a man arch in case beyond but not in case p2 and this man arch is really grand and it's got an entire map of the Kerbola system so it's one of the many Easter eggs in case b2 but yeah, very ominous, very interesting, as I said, it's Monarch, but who could have built them? I don't know, but now it's time for our departure, and from now I'm just speeding everything up much faster, because, like, you guys have seen this a million times, you must know how to do this on your own by this point, so yeah, just take off pointing flat, get a nice high apoapsis, get into orbit, and then after that we're gonna do a maneuver bone, uh, and I've been I can't speak a maneuver node to get into orbit and then after that we're gonna do another maneuver node uh, with that point against Mun's orbits I guess but yeah you guys know how to do this so I don't know what to say about you anymore if you don't know how to do this go back to some of the earlier episodes of this series but yeah so getting everything nice and close and there we go we got a nice low periapsis just about 39 kilometers I, I don't know actually 30 kilometers i always aim for about 30 kilometers that's a good height between 25 and 30 kilometers because like that you don't burn up and it's just enough so yeah now i'm time warping until we reach earth atmosphere i nearly burped but you guys didn't hear it okay there we go, we're coming into Kerbin. There we go, that's nice. Did I just say Earth earlier? Oh well. But yeah. Now, I like to deploy the final stage just as we enter the atmosphere because sometimes we can get a nice fireworks display. This time we didn't, but yeah, in case we won, uh, I used to always do that because I like the funny fireworks display. <laughs> But yeah, we've deployed our parachute and we're coming in for a splashdown. So yeah, we'll splash down near uh, the continent. So that's kind of nice. Like that, it's not too long of a bit of a boat ride for our poor Kerbals. And there we go. We're nearly there, and we have land landed. Oh, we have splashed down. I should have said. So we're now back at the, the KSC. So now we're going to submit our missions to get free science points again. I think I accidentally cut out the bit where I um, splashed down. But there we go. Now we have some of the science. We've reached. We found a man arch. So the next mission is a uh, rover thing. And also going to the Minmus. So yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, we need to find a, a thing. We need to get an orbit around Minmus because we have a bad signal. So yeah, now let's go to the R&D to retrieve some of that, to um, use up some of those science points, so I'm kind of speeding things up because I spent quite a while looking around, but in the end I think I went with um, power systems or something. I don't remember what I went with, but I went with something. Oh yeah, I wanted rover, so I did durable power systems and rover. But yeah, on the left hand side is a video for you. On the right hand side is a playlist. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.